Today, we are talking donuts, which you see spelled D-O-U-G-H-N-U-T-S and D-O-N-U-T-S, and also E-M-O-T-I-O-N-A-L space S-U-P-P-O-R-T space R-I-N-G-S. I checked with some local experts, and it turns out they're all correct. Donuts are the rings of fried batter or dough that gave Americans in the early 19th century the excuse they were looking for to eat dessert for breakfast. But there's so much more than that. Donuts have serious power. Pick up a dozen before the kids wake up and you're a superhero. Carry a box into the office and you're CEO for the day. Well, maybe not CEO, but definitely VP of human resources, right? No? All right, we'll take middle management. We're hired. Donuts clout grows exponentially when they're freshly made. And the freshest donuts are the ones that you make yourself. We'll get there. But first, my entire childhood. I'm a New England boy, so I grew up with none other than Dunkin' Donuts. I remember sitting in the store watching older customers buy plain donuts that had a tiny bump of a handle on them and then dunk them in black coffee. Now the name on the store supported what they were doing, so I like got it. But as a kid, I couldn't fathom doing it. Tray after tray of donuts glistening with glaze, topped with dripping chocolate, or dusted in cinnamon and sugar. And you opt for a plain? To Dunkin' bitter coffee? Well, the point is somewhat moot now that Dunkin' Donuts is just Dunkin'. Dunkin' what? Kids these days must be even more confused. Now, despite that Dunkin' upbringing, I didn't fall head over heels for donuts until I walked into a Krispy Kreme, like one of their stores. I didn't just like step on a Krispy Kreme on the sidewalk and then eat it. Instead of a mouth-filling, slightly crumbly donut dusted in no-melt confectioner sugar, I was biting into vanilla-scented air, wrapped in swaths of delicate chewy dough, all enrobed in just wisps of glaze. Okay, so to be honest, they weren't crispy, or really creamy, unless you got the custard-filled ones. Man, I guess these donut shops really struggle with their names. I decided, right then and there, that you don't eat a Krispy Kreme, you like absorb it. I call it donut osmosis. What I didn't know at the time was that I had just learned the distinction between cake donuts and yeasted donuts. Now, before you all head to the comments to tell me that Dunkin' also sells yeasted donuts, let's just settle it right here, right now. I know that, but A, they aren't even close to what Krispy Kreme puts out, and two, my whole intro to this video would have to be redone, and it's already taken me 37 takes just to get here. Drunken dog butts. Dolphin doormats? Look, I don't know why I can't say it. All right, give it to me one more time. Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts, Dunkin' Donuts. Danny DeVito. Sorry, where were we? Oh yeah, let's take a deeper look at both styles. Now a lot of the difference between these two donut styles actually comes down to gluten. So let's do a quick recap on it. Believe it or not, gluten doesn't actually exist in flour. Wheat flour and a couple of other grain flours contain two proteins that when wetted, join to form the elastic protein called gluten. Through resting and or kneading, gluten can form a pretty incredible rubber-like network that can trap air. So much so that I've actually tried to blow it up like a balloon before. Check out this experiment from when I was 12. We use high protein bread flour for breads because it develops a lot of very flexible gluten, which as we've seen, acts like a balloon. A strong gluten network that can trap loads of expanding gas means baked and fried doughs that puff dramatically. Cake donuts are mixed like quick breads. That is just until the flour is incorporated into the wet ingredients. The goal is to hydrate the flour, but limit any significant gluten development. When the chemical leaveners baking powder and baking soda do their thing and they produce carbon dioxide, the batter is only able to trap some of the gas, which it does in small bubbles throughout the donut. All of this makes cake donuts denser than yeasted donuts. What does that actually mean when you eat them? It means that there will be more donut in every bite of a cake donut than in a yeasted donut. They take over your mouth absorb moisture, and practically beg for a sip of something to chase them down. Cake donuts are a wonderful, immersive experience. Yeasted donuts are mixed like a bread dough because, well, they're an enriched bread dough. That means that they're leavened with yeast and needed to develop gluten, the whole nine yards. They puff dramatically in the hot oil because they've got the structure to support it. Remember that gluten balloon? Gluten makes yeasted donuts feel light and airy. It's also responsible for their satisfying, delicate chew. If cake donuts take over your mouth, yeasted donuts go straight for your brain, hitting every pleasure center along the way. Now, if you can't tell by this point, I'm pretty smitten with yeasted donuts. Once I got bit by the bug, I assumed everyone else had too. Boy, was I wrong. Years ago, I held an internal poll of my colleagues at Cook's Illustrated, asking their preference between yeasted and cake. It was essentially a tie. Well, I'm back with my poll today and a much, much bigger audience. So in the comments section, cast your vote, cake or yeasted. Now, regardless of your preference, yeasted or best, 
One thing still remains true from when I mentioned it a couple of minutes earlier in this video. The best donuts are the freshest donuts, and the freshest donuts are the ones you make yourself. Let's go to the kitchen and do some frying. Now, for those of you that hate frying because it uses a lot of oil, and then you have to figure out a way to get rid of the oil, I've got two things I really want you to hear. Check out this experiment. To figure out how many times you can reuse oil, we fried batch after batch of potato chips in one pot and batches of fried chicken in another. In between each batch, we use an oil degradation kit that visually shows oil breakdown. The liquid in the test vials starts out blue and turns greener as the oil breaks down further. The fried chicken sample vials started to turn green after the first reuse and were dark green and dunskies after the fifth round, at which point the chicken tasted greasy and off. The potato chip oil remained pale and clean tasting and barely changed color in the test vials, producing identical chips to eight batches. At that point, we just stopped testing. I would put donuts in that chip category, or perhaps even cleaner. They make very little contact with the oil itself because they sit on top, release very little water into the oil, and fry for a short period of time. All that means that the oil stays clean and reusable. But I hear you saying, Dan, at some point, I'm going to have to throw out the oil, which is super messy and annoying. And to that, I'll say, check out this magic. I am obsessed with a Japanese product that you can find online by searching for waste oil cooking powder. You add the powder to oil that is at about 175 degrees, let it cool, and it solidifies into a gel that you can then toss in the trash or a commercial compost bin. Magic. Actually, it's oleogelation. The product interacts with liquid oil, much like gelatin in water, to create an oleogel. A fairly recent development in food science, oleogelation immobilizes liquid oil in a matrix of crystalline fat, so it behaves very much like a solid. It's very cool. So, now are you ready to fry? Okay, great. First up, cake donuts. If you've made quick breads, or like cake before, you'll be very familiar with this technique. We're gonna mix one cup of our flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, salt, and a little nutmeg in our stand mixer. Then we'll pour in our wet ingredients, which means buttermilk, melted butter, and eggs. We use the paddle attachment, which is perfect for folding ingredients together. Actually, let's do a quick sidebar on the machine attachments. I like to think of them in terms of what manual task they are mimicking. The whisk attachment is pretty obvious. It's your hand using a whisk. The dough hook is literally everything from your hand to your upper body, the parts you use to knead bread dough on the counter. And the paddle? That's you with a rubber spatula or wooden spoon in hand, folding ingredients gently at low speed or mixing vigorously to smear butter and sugar together. Okay, back to business. Remember, cake donut equals minimum gluten development. So we will mix our wet and dry ingredients until just smooth, about 30 seconds. Then we add the remaining flour and mix until just combined, about 30 seconds longer. And that's it. Then we just roll out our dough a half inch thick and cut it into donuts using two biscuit cutters. Then fry at 375 degrees until golden on both sides. That takes less than a minute per side. While we finish frying our cake donuts, a quick note on heating up oil for fast frying foods. You might be tempted to heat your oil over high heat to get it to the temperature as fast as possible. But doing so makes it really easy to overshoot the desired temperature, especially if you're using a heavy cast iron Dutch oven, which will continue to transfer heat to the oil even after you've turned off the flame. Check out this graph. Adding our donuts to the oil won't cool the oil down in the same way that, say, chicken parts would, so they'll brown and burn before they cook through. The lesson? Heat your fry oil over medium heat for donuts. Okay, cake donuts are done and have cooled for a couple of minutes. Straight into the cinnamon and sugar you go. Mmm, mmm. Okay, so I'll admit, that's a really nice donut. It's an experience. The cinnamon and sugar for me is pure nostalgia, and the soft, crumbly interior is just so comforting. Okay, now it is time for yeasted donuts. This is Cook's Illustrated senior editor Annie Petito's recipe, and it is an absolute star. We are making a yeasted dough, not, so we start by mixing our flour, sugar, and yeast together in our stand mixer. Then our liquid ingredients, milk and egg. We'll mix with our dough hook until the dough just comes together, and then let it stand for 20 minutes to allow gluten to start to form. This resting period is known as an autolyse. With no salt or fat in the mix, the flour is able to hydrate, so gluten starts forming and stitching itself together into a network. Now we just add our salt and knead until smooth, before adding butter, that's right, butter, a few pieces at a time until fully incorporated. Then we let the dough hang out in the fridge overnight to ferment. This makes fresh morning donuts easy peasy. Just as we did before, we'll roll it out a half inch thick and then cut our donuts. After the dough proofs, it's fry time. Now we want our oil at 360 degrees, so we get lots of great spring when the donut hits the oil. Enough spring, in fact, that we end up with a beautiful donut midriff. That's pretty cute, right? 
Well, it's also a sign that we did a great job. The donuts sprung a lot when they hit the hot oil. We have finally reached my favorite part, glazing, dipping, and sprinkling. Annie developed so many fabulous glazes. I guarantee there's a glaze for everyone watching. For the classic, we just whisk confectioner sugar, water, and salt together, and then dunk both sides in. Ugh, look at these shimmering classic glazed donuts. This is perfection in my book, but no reason to stop with a basic glaze. Check out our ooey gooey chocolate glaze. Or how about a matcha glaze that is both sweet and subtly savory? We've even got one for those coffee and donut fans. You know, the ones who used to dunk their donuts in coffee, but are now just dunking. And of course, we gotta make Homer happy with raspberry and sprinkles. How is that the first Simpsons reference today? I really gotta check on my priorities. Ah, uh, I know what'll make me feel better. A jelly donut. And of course, don't forget about the donut holes. Man, I am losing my mind. Now clearly, I don't think these donuts need anything else. They're perfect. But I kind of want to try something I've seen on the internet. You know, the World Wide Web, a grilled cheese donut sandwich. Look, 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 I'm with you. It might be terrible, it might be awful, but what if it's good? I've never made one before, so let's do this together. We just slice a glazed donut in half, sandwich the halves, cut side out around a slice of American cheese, griddle in butter, and eat. Okay, so it's not bad. It might actually be kind of good, but you know what? These homemade donuts are too good for that kind of treatment. And that's why this is how to eat emotional support rings. I mean, this is how to eat donuts. Thank you all so much for watching. We have links to both recipes below this video. I really hope you'll try them. Okay, and now for the poll in the comments. Please let me know which type of donut you prefer, cake or yeasted. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.